I'm going diving. Look at that, it looks really calm in here. And down in the water, it's looking clear. Meeting up with Matt, we're diving, uh, diving those little islands, Brandon or Brandon Islands, I think they're called. Jesse Island is over there in the background. That's a cool spot too. But today, diving over there. I've actually dove here once before. That would have been a couple years ago, I think 2020, in April, with Cal. Unfortunately, the visibility was a write-off. The structure's really cool, but uh, you yeah, know, did no justice with the water clarity. So we're back here again. The water's looking nice right now. That's positive. Matt, uh, he works at two. We're gonna get in the water for 12. He's gonna be out by 1.15. So he's got a short window, so I'll be with him for a bit. Tomorrow, heading on a ferry, going to a southern Gulf Island, doing a day trip out there with Joseph. I haven't seen him for a while. And meeting up with uh, Barry Kovich, AKA Emerald Scott on YouTube. Uh, he's got really, really cool videos, really educational. Uh, he's got a gift for filming. He's got some awesome footage. So uh, I kind of look up to him, to be honest with you guys. He's been free diving on our waters, uh, I think from the 70s or 80s. So he's been around. So it's gonna be a fun few days. I'm loving this weather. It's getting warm out. I think it's like March 15th right now. It's a uh, solid uh, 14, 15 degrees. Feels like summer. The trade-off though is the nice water that I'm looking at isn't gonna be around much longer because the algae blooms are imminent. Let's hope, uh, let's hope they hang off at least until we're done on a trip tomorrow. All right, Matt's here. I think we're gonna get in the water. You ready for this, man? Well, I'm ready. You got enough window? You yeah. got time? Let's do this. Kill her, man. Kill her. Well, if you're late, he's a lifeguard, so uh, uh, he can just say he rescued me in the water. That's a good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever get that feeling like you're forgetting something? Yeah, me too. Thankfully, it often just ends up being paranoia, but that's not always the case. I forgot my snorkel. I keep looking for my snorkel. I'm like, I'm like trying to play. Like, where is it? <laughs> Bit. It's one of the more forgiving things to leave behind, compared to, say, a mask or weight belt, but it sure makes doing a breathe up a pain in the ass. Plus, half the time I'm in the water, I'm just snorkeling around at the surface. Oh well, thankfully, it wasn't a few day trip. The structure here is really cool. Definitely makes the dive. Uh, the life, not, not a whole lot. I think this hair has been overfished. I do find it strange that an area that rests within an RCA and is in plain sight of a police marine vessel and the Pacific Biological Station has virtually no fish, but that seems to be the case. The macro life seem to be thriving though, plus lots of starfish and various anemone. wasn't all bad, lots of red rock crab too. The spot is like, it's like barren. No green lake, no perch, no rockfish. This is lifeless. These guys cracked me up. Well, unfortunately, the visibility is the greatest. Diving without a snorkel is a huge pain. That's in a bit of a rush too to get to work. Yeah, we're not seeing a whole lot of life and uh, nothing really to write home about. Uh, so we're gonna call it a day, call it a dive. But that's all good. It's better than not getting in the water. I just nice to float around here and uh, quite a swim, so a bit of exercise to top it off. I'm looking forward to tomorrow though, doing that dive out in the Southern Gulf Islands. Even if the visibility is great, it's still gonna be a fun day. Uh, so uh, time will tell. All right, peace out. Uh, bright and early. Drove out to Swartz Bay last night, uh, slept in my van, woke up around 4 a.m. to catch the 5 a.m. ferry, and we're over here on Maine Island. Gonna be diving on Maine, meeting up with Barry, and uh, Joseph uh, sharing the wild. He uh, tagged along as well. Pretty excited to just explore a new spot. The visibility looking down at the water right now, it's actually kind of too dark to tell. We could be dealing with an algae bloom, hopefully not. Right now we're just uh, hiking around. We got here nice and early, Barry's not gonna show up till about 11.30. We wanted to see the island a bit before uh, before getting in the water. But to be fair, we might uh, actually do two dives, uh, maybe even three. We're gonna finish off the day in Salt Spring and then make my way back home. Welcome back, man. Yeah, man, it's good to be back. Yeah, where are you, Bali? You're in Bali, right? Yeah. Seeing your daughter, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I'm, I'm happy that you tagged on. Give me one of those. I got lots of content to edit. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yeah. The more the merrier. Yeah. So we got Tawasson right there. Right over here is going to be uh, Point Roberts, Washington. I'm home away from home. 
over on the point there, uh, Lily Lily Point. And then if you look over in this direction, we got a, I think that's just the tip of Saturna. And then, not sure about that island, but the one right in behind there is Susha. And I've spent many, many summers over there as a kid. It's one of the first islands that I would explore for that matter. This just keeps getting better and better. It's like stunningly beautiful here. Ah, this is a really special spot. All these Gulf Islands, for that matter, extremely special. Uh, that's my goal this year, is to explore them a lot. Rather than driving two and a half hours to the west coast, pay the uh, $40 to come over here and see some new coast. Just makes everything more exciting. We're uh, gonna do a bit of a visibility check here. Fingers crossed, that is good. We'll find out here in a second. Ah, doesn't look too, too bad. Maybe not compared to Bali, but <laughs> workable yeah and that's in a bay too so uh yeah it might, might be a bit better on the other side there if you're not into sightseeing and island exploring go ahead and skip forward to the 10 minute mark joseph and i spent roughly five hours driving all over maine to scope various dive spots i trimmed it down to the best four minutes that said we still have lots of coast to see for the next time second spot i'll be honest this one's a bit of a big deal for me because i see it all the time coming across on the ferry from Tawasana Swartz Bay. Uh, we're here at this lighthouse, Lighthouse Park, I think is the name of the spot. Not sure about the lighthouse itself. Damn, that's gorgeous here. This is really cool. You know, I'm sure the diving's gonna be great today, but if it's not, the above water scenery is phenomenal. And it's just nice to see a new area, a new island, loving it. We're just walking around, just scouting out areas, trying to find a spot to dive. We're noticing a lot of the locations have like a really gradual drop off and uh, we're looking at active pass if we swim out to the drop off we'll be in four and a half knots of uh, current by the time we jump in uh, but not a big deal we'll just roll with the current float with the current i guess would be a more accurate statement Ugh. rain debris might as well get that out of the ocean that's a neat log look at that eaten away by uh, woodpeckers or some type of worm Alrighty, next spot. We're gonna explore as much as we can until Barry gets here. I think the next one's gonna be it, as long as we can access the coast. I think uh, we're gonna scrap the recreational dive. I'm just gonna go look for some bottles here. Just kidding. Yeah, now we're just doing a little visibility check on some pier, government dock. So far it's looking all right, but I don't wanna get my hopes up. Never get your hopes up. That's something I've learned time after time after time. If it looks good, don't be deceived because it might not be that way in the water. This might be a bit weird, but I love that smell of creosote, the old wooden pilings. It's not very good for the environment, but uh, brings back memories. Cruise in the Gulf Islands. Had a coffee at 7 a.m. I need a second coffee. Two coffee kind of day. After sleeping in my van last night, it wasn't a good one, but I got a lot of energy from the excitement. We got uh, another prospect here. We're looking at Active Pass over there. Looks beautiful. And uh, even better, got some sake pottery, old sake bottles. I think we've explored all our options, and uh, this one looks to be the best. We're at a private campground. I think what we're gonna end up doing, uh, we're gonna scout a little bit more, but we're probably gonna just pay for a campsite, and then we can park here. Uh, it's 25 bucks a night per adult. I'm not sure if it's per adult or total. Yeah, I think this is our best option. The coast looks good. We got access to the tidal rapids there, so be able to swim around and a nice entry for Barry too. We spent the entire morning driving around looking for potential dive spots and the visibility has now deteriorated. I think the uh, Fraser River gets pulled through Active Pass and yeah, we see the uh, kind of dirty sediment looking water. It's all good though, Barry should be here shortly. And then uh, we got a few prospects, a few spots that we're gonna probably explore. Um, hopefully the viz is a bit better at depth, we'll see. But it's just nice being on a new island. Also, I'm not I'm not upset. I'm just doing a bit of beach combing. Joseph is checking out one more spot. He's gonna do a quick uh, recon. It's on the western side of the island. I don't think there's much structure, just a sandy bottom, but the visibility might be a bit better. Uh, so it might be worth checking that out instead. So we drove over the whole entire island just to dive at our first spot. It's usually the way it goes. So we're gonna swim over to that island over there. You can see it in the distance with Mount Baker in the background. Uh, so we'll uh, dive around that and see what we can find. Looks a bit tidal, which usually means life.
So far so good. If the visibility stays this nice, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm pretty stoked. Even if we just look around for some crab and uh, dive those old pilings for bottles, I'm in for that too. We did learn something while I'm in. The shore diving doesn't seem to be spectacular. Most good areas are inaccessible due to private properties. A boat would be key. Although this dive spot was far from epic, the journey to get ourselves here was two hours of driving, sleeping in my vehicle, early morning ferry, and hours of searching. Like they say, it's the journey that counts, not the destination. Okay, the destination counts too, but you catch my drift. We did find some cool structure between Maine and Georgeson Island. The visibility wasn't great, but it was workable, and the water between the islands was surprisingly deep. The current was ripping in the narrows though, so it did make diving a bit of a challenge. Lots of young kelp dancing away. This spot is also RCA, but unlike Departure Bay, I was seeing some fishies. Rockfish perch and a few greenling. By the way, this is far from my best work, but it still beats nothing. I spotted one link cod too and filmed it by fluke. It was gone like the wind when I tried to find it. I found the best way to dive this spot was to find some protection from the current and do my breathe up, dive down, and work my way in. This way, I wasn't working too hard at the surface and I had a bit of time to look around while at depth. I was spotting rockfish in a meter or two. I didn't know they lived this shallow. On the way back in, I looked under the pilings and spotted some dungeness and an old cell phone. The one dungeon ended up being six and a half on the money. One keeper, still better than none. Just finished up the dive and it was a lackluster. Visibility was, uh, I don't know, maybe four out of 10. The conditions weren't great at all. Saw some cool stuff in between the uh, two islands there, or I guess main island and whatever that small little island is. But it got a bit deeper in there. Saw some cool kelp. Saw one link cod, a couple of rockfish. I saw rockfish in like three feet of water, it's crazy. Never seen one that shallow before, and it was a big one too. Big uh, belly on it, looks like it was pregnant. It's really cool uh, meeting up with Barry though. He's a, he's a fish, man. He swam all the way around that island. Um, he was going down there for like a solid, I don't know, two minutes. I was like, has anyone seen Barry? I was a little scared for him. And then he'd pop up, you know, he'd be okay. He's a good diver, damn. He uh, said he dove this spot. Last time he was here was uh, four and a half decades ago. So 45 years ago, that's insane. I'm only 33, so I was, yeah, minus 10 at that age. <laughs> uh, we're gonna finish up here, catch the 510 ferry. I got one Dungeness, might save it for Jasmine. Joseph might eat it. We're gonna see some more nice, beautiful views on the ferry over to Salt Spring and then actually make the way home for the family. Get the hot water, essential. It's actually a little chilly right now. Yeah, man. Well, the visibility might not be on our side, but the weather sure is. I think we're breaking temperature records right now. At least yesterday we did. It's mid-March and it's almost like 20 degrees. I think yesterday got up to 18. I think tonight, today it might get up to 20. It's freaking beautiful. Right now I just met up with Joseph and Fred's on his way. Same with uh, Jordan. I think Lori's coming. One more person, I forget who it might be, but uh, we got a full boat. We're gonna be cruising around the islands here and looking for some nice diving, chasing some good visibility. And who knows, maybe see a schooling ball of herring. That'd be neat. Fred said eight o'clock, and uh, of course, it's a uh, past eight. He's not here. Fashionably late Fred, I call him. I'm just kidding, Fred. You guys know him, though. Owner operator of East to West Freediving. Him and Lori. I give him a shout out every time I see him. If you're in the Victoria area, check out his shop. This has got everything you need. Good little establishment. Look at all this filth. People just come here and throw the trash out of their vehicles. And it just accumulates. Humans are pigs. I was wondering if you're going to show up or not. Nine minutes is actually less late than I'm usually late. It's true, it's true. How you doing, man? Doing good? Pretty good, yeah. Awesome. Hopefully we can hit slack. And hopefully the Navionics and everything actually give us the right slack time. I agree, man. That and the visibility. Hopefully the visibility behaves. Yeah. Oh man, it's gorgeous out, isn't it? How you doing, Michael? Good man. Awesome. Long time. And Lori, over there. What's up, Lori? You 
can't ask for better conditions on the water than this. We were blessed. We're here at a spot. And the okay, disability is uh, looking scary. Drop an anchor. <laughs> oh, man. Hopefully uh, we get underneath it. It's up, but I'm not hopeful. I said on the water, not in the water. I see no light. Ah, the dreaded algae bloom. I knew it was a matter of time. Just like the pollinating trees and flowers come spring, algae blooms start to kick in full force this time of year. As annoying as it is, that's life. If you're a cold, green sea diver in the Pacific Northwest. It definitely makes us appreciate the good days though. Thankfully, blooms this bad are often short-lived and you can still find amazing conditions in the spring and summer, but they don't seem to be as consistent as the winter. When I have some time, I'll make a visibility predicting 101 video. But to be fair, you might as well flip a coin because it's not an easy task. Two bad scallops are close. This guy's just hanging out right on the bottom. Look how fat that is. All right, see you later. Hope was futile, but we opted to check out another spot. Beautiful structure, atrocious viz. I did a few drops but gave up pretty quickly after swimming into some boulders twice in a row. I've already had sea urchins removed from me surgically twice. I wasn't going for the hat trick. The structure seemed amazing though, so definitely a dive for another day. Yeah, it's a really beautiful spot below and above, but I just can't see any of it while diving, so. Yeah, it's kind of a write-off today, unfortunately. But it's still nice to be out here. Nice was an understatement. Well, you win some and you lose some. That's our story today. I think we lost the visibility real, real bad. Full on algae bloom. The only spot where we saw some decent fizz, it was uh, really shallow and there was a warning saying, don't harvest any bivalves due to sewage contamination. So. We didn't really want to dive there. It's all good though, we're uh, just getting warmed up here on Thetis Island, and then we're gonna call it a day. I got some stuff to do anyways. I gotta go back to the house and uh, do a couple repairs before I take off for work. Heading off to Fort McMurray this week again. Back on Sunday though, or Saturday, and uh, probably do a bunch more diving. Might have to look for some freshwater spots though. The visibility is a write off. No real point in exploring. Paying money for these ferries and boat rides, and blah, blah, blah. Thanks Fred though, and everybody else that joined on this trip. Uh, even though the diving was crappy, we still had fun. Peace, everybody.